We're going to begin this hour with a live look at St. John's. And as we said earlier in the morning, it's not the weather that's delaying plans for the election on Saturday. It is COVID-19 and word of growing uncertainty and confusion surrounding the provincial election set for Saturday. Voting day just two days away. But a record increase in the number of virus cases could well disrupt plans for that ballot. The province reported 53 new infections yesterday. That's the confirmed total, the highest number yet throughout all the pandemic. St. John's and the capital region now under new tight restrictions. The leader of the provincial Progressive Conservative Party, Chess Crosby, calling for the election to be postponed, temporarily put on hold because of safety concerns. Now, earlier this morning, I was speaking at length to this man, the province's chief electoral officer, Bruce Chalk, about where plans for the Saturday vote stand. And he told us a number of new details, including he plans to consult today with the province's chief medical officer of health, Dr. Janice Fitzgerald, about the path forward and who makes the call. One big worry he has is that he may not have enough staff to even open polling stations in the capital region. Here's some of what he told us. You know, I've had a couple of our returning officers in this particular area who have come to me and said that, uh, you know, they, uh, uh, they've had, uh, you know, 30, 40 people resign yesterday and uh, out of a staff of probably a, uh, um, you know, uh, maybe 100, 150, and they've gone through a list of 250 extra people to see if they can get additional people to work, and uh, they've been told no. We've heard a lot, and I've gotten received a lot of emails from people who've said that, uh, you know, that they are not going to go and vote this, uh, this Saturday because they don't feel safe, and, uh, you know, uh, you know that I have to respect that decision of the, that decision that they don't go. So that is Bruce Chalk. As we spoke to him earlier this morning on CBC News Network, again, concerns about people running the polling station and people concerned about going to those polling stations to vote in the provincial election. Chris O'Neill Yates is on the story, and she's live in St. John's with us. Chris, we had that interview in the 6 o'clock hour of our program, and after that conversation with Bruce Chalk, more breaking news from him in that he's released a letter to party leaders. What is he now saying? So, Heather, yes, this is very rapidly developing. There's been a uh, there's been a, a hot potato situation here this week. Where is it the chief electoral officer or is it the chief medical health officer who gets to decide whether this election is postponed or not? And in a letter to the party leaders this morning, and I'll quote a little bit from it. But essentially, the gist is that he's been trying to do his best and hired people to try to make this election go fairly when Andrew Fury called it just over three weeks ago. He says it's not his responsibility. I'll just quote a passage from it. He says, the chief electoral officer is hired to administer elections, not public health. We follow public health advice and guidelines to ensure the safety of all election staff, party staff, voters, volunteers, and the public. There are constitutional limitations and other legal implications that limit my ability to unilaterally prolong an election period for an indefinite time. So this is part of the issue that has needed to be clarified in the last few days. Uh, here is a little of what Bruce Chalk had to say this morning when he spoke to CBC News on your program about this subject. Well, I don't think it rests with one single person. I actually think it rests with uh, with Dr. Fitzgerald and I. Uh, Dr. Fitzgerald is able to issue health orders under the uh, under the Act, and uh, because of that, uh, she can. Uh, you know, she can provide me guidance on, on the election itself. So this letter goes into uh, uh, Bruce Chalk's uh, issues with having the election. But we did hear this morning, Heather, from uh, one person who said that in their district, 90 percent of the sanitary staff who are supposed to keep the, the polling booth safe and clean are not coming to work uh, the other electoral workers, she says that so many of them, I think somewhere near half of them, that's just in one district. So there is, you know, 
it's a situation now where it's bounced back and forth about who is responsible. But in the end, it comes down to the fact that the workers themselves don't feel safe enough to administer an election. And they're the ones that are pushing the hand of public officials to postpone this election. It's, it's a very ironic situation. Could they postpone in those certain areas where the cases are the most concerning? Go ahead, just, you know, not announce in those various polling stations or districts? I mean, these are probably the scenarios that they're considering, I guess, Chris. Or could well, they I think considered? all of this, yeah, they could be, Heather, because, you know, this is, this is a constitutional question. It's a statutory question. And it's probably not a situation that's ever arisen. I don't know of a situation in the country. Probably there is one. But uh, what they could do here, the, the possibilities and the, and the limitations, it's anyone's guess. But we do know that this election had to be called within a year. Andrew Fury didn't have to go until August. The House of Assembly, by a majority, voted back uh, a while ago to postpone the election. But... The election was called anyway. I remember, We're in the middle of a issue. pandemic, and here we are. And, and, and during the debate, that last television debate, that became a big point of contention. Why are Newfoundlanders and Labradorians even going to the polls right now if that was not mandatory? So, all right, obviously we're going to be hearing from you a lot today, Chris, on where this issue goes from a, a, a jurisdiction standpoint and what the decision is. All of this is hinging on this rapid increase in the number of cases, 53 confirmed yesterday, as we've been saying. So what are we hearing from the chief medical officer in terms of what is happening and where the numbers are likely to go? Well, she says they're going to go up, even though she said, I can't speculate. They're going to go up. All of this began and happened really quickly. It began in a high school in Mount Pearl on Sunday. There were two positive cases, and here we are now on Thursday. Hundreds of people are in isolation. We have 110 cases now in the province. About half of the new ones are under 20. But what happened was that it started at this high school, but through social activities and sports, it spread to other high schools. Then it ended up being taken home to family members and it spread it spread there. So it's 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 confined to the Avalon Peninsula, but her fear is, and that's Dr. Janice Fitzgerald's fear, is that this could spread to other parts of the island. And she said the surprising and disappointing thing when they started doing the contact tracing was to, was to learn how many contacts people have during a pandemic. And uh, so um, the other part, Heather, is that people were having symptoms for some time and not being tested. So that was also delaying uh, the the true numbers being revealed of the number of people who t are tested positive for, for COVID-19. So she's expecting more cases. We'll get a briefing again today from her to learn the extent of it. And of course, we're all watching to see how this story develops. Uh, Bruce Chalk said he would decide today or tomorrow whether or not the election would be postponed. If workers are not going to be able to work and they can't run the election, I don't think he's going to have much choice. That decision may be made for him by the workers. Okay, Chris, listen, uh, thank you for everything this morning. Really appreciate all that breaking news coverage out of St. John's. Our Chris O'Neill Yates is there.